I've been wanting to build a system using the RTX 3060 Ti for quite some time now, and I planned on pairing it with the i5-12600K from Intel. Well, as you can see, this is not an Intel CPU. Let me explain to you why I changed my mind, and let's see how this 3060 Ti build turns out. First, let me tell you why I chose AMD instead of Intel. I'll put it simple. AMD has better prices. Swing on over to Newegg with me and I'll show you. The i5-12600K retails for $279.94 with a $5 off promo code. Well, the Ryzen 5 5600X retails for $229 USD with a $20 off promo code. That's a major difference in price for not a lot of difference in performance when it comes to gaming or even gaming and streaming for that matter. Also, AMD has a lot more options when it comes to motherboard support. The Intel motherboards really only have one option under $100. Most of them start around $140. And that's their B660 motherboard. So they have locked multipliers and you can't overclock the CPU. AMD's B550 motherboards have multiple options under $100. So your total investment cost between the motherboard and the CPU is just lower with AMD. And like I said, the performance is almost exactly the same. Now that I explained why I chose AMD over Intel, let's take a quick look at the parts I have here and I'll get this build underway. The processor I chose is the Ryzen 5 5600X. This has six cores and 12 threads and boosts all the way up to 4.6 gigahertz. To cool this processor, I'm using the Vetru V5 CPU air cooler it's only about $30 on Amazon and it performs really well compared to the stock cooler that comes with the 5600X. The motherboard that I'm pairing with this is the MSI MAG B550M Mortar Wi-Fi. This is a great motherboard. I've used it quite a bit in my builds here in the studio. I absolutely love it. It's got built-in Wi-Fi. It's got PCI 4.0. It's got four DIMM slots for RAM and it has a built-in IO shield, which I absolutely love. The RAM that I'm putting in this system is two 8 gig sticks of G-Skills Trident Z RAM at 3200 megahertz. So I've got 16 gigs total. For storage, I've got the Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSD. It's one terabyte. This is a PCI 4.0 drive, which as I said, the motherboard can totally take advantage of to get those blazing fast NVMe speeds. Of course, the graphics card is gonna be the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti Aorus Master. This is a really nice card. It's got eight gigs of VRAM. It performs great, and I've just wanted an excuse to put it into a build here on the channel. The power supply is an EVGA Supernova 650 GM. This is an SFX 80 plus gold power supply. SFX is required for this build because of my choice of case. The case I'm gonna be using is the Lian Li 011 Dynamic Mini. This case has a modular design that makes it fit tons of different builds. I did a complete review on this case here on the channel. I'll leave it up in the YouTube card and you can go check it out after this video, of course. Now I'm also gonna be adding six Lian Li Uni fans. These are the SL120s, they're 120 mil fans. I'm also gonna be adding two Silent Wings 3 fans from Be Quiet. They're 140 millimeters. They're gonna go in the back of the case just to create that nice flow of air and uh, finish off the build. So enough talk about all these parts. I'm gonna start building this thing.
Here we are, the build is done. Hope you enjoyed that little montage. As you can see, the build is a little different than I had planned on, but isn't that how it goes? The GPU I said I originally wanted to use was the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti Aorus Master. The card I have in here now is this one. This is my old standby, my go-to. I don't know why I keep going back to EVGA, but I always do. Luckily, I had another 3060 Ti here in the studio. This is the EVGA RTX 3060 Ti XC Gaming. Same card, a 3060 Ti through and through. However, the card that I had for the Aorus Master card has two PCI power connectors. It's got a six pin and it's got an eight pin. My custom cables that I have that I really wanted to use, these are uh, cable mod cables, by the way. I didn't say it in the parts breakdown list, but I have cable mod sleeved extension cables. Well, I don't have a six pin for the cable extensions. I only have eight pins. Now, if you're thinking, well, why didn't you just not use the extensions? Because I'm using an SFX power supply, the cables don't reach all the way around to the GPU. So instead of not using the cables or not using that style GPU, I wanted to use a 3060 Ti. I put in my EVGA RTX 3060 Ti XC Gaming. It came through in a clutch and it did the job. Now I just got done testing this. I decided to do things a little bit differently here. Most people nowadays seem to be trying to jump on the bandwagon of 1440p gaming. I usually test 1080p, I wanted to see what this system can do. This is a reasonable system for what most people can afford, I, I think, if you're trying to build a new system. And I wanted to see how it would do at 1440p gaming and streaming. A lot of people want to stream these days too. This system can do it. First game I played was Valorant. I know Valorant is not a very intense game or anything like that. It doesn't require a lot of high-end hardware, but I was able to achieve 398.6 FPS average at 1440p gaming. That was just straight gaming. Then when I decided to start streaming, I streamed using OBS uh, Studio. I was able to achieve 373.5 FPS average. That's really not too bad of a drop considering the computer is gaming and streaming at the same time. It really doesn't matter the frame rates or anything because 373 FPS is still insanely high. You'd have to have a 240 Hertz or 280 Hertz monitor to really take advantage of that kind of FPS. So you're probably thinking, well, Valorant's just an easy game to play. What happens if you throw a AAA title at this? I'm glad you asked. I decided to run Forza Horizon 5. This is a very new title. It's very graphically intense. Now this is max settings, mind you. 1440p resolution, max settings, achieves 91.4 FPS average while gaming on this system. The 5600X and the 3060 Ti. No overclocks or anything, this is straight out of box settings. This computer achieved 76.8 FPS average. So I mean, it was only about 15 FPS dip from gaming to gaming and streaming. I mean, 76 FPS average is really playable, especially on a game like Forza. You don't have to have high frame rates for that game. It's just a beautiful looking game and anything over 60 is gonna be a good experience. I don't really wanna talk prices because they're changing so frequently. Uh, as I said at the beginning, the CPU is down to 229 with a $20 mail-in rebate right now. So for 209, you get a six core 12 thread chip that can game and stream uh, with no issues at 1440p. Of course, the 3060 Ti helps a little bit. I did use the NVENC encoder that's built into the NVIDIA graphics cards to be able to stream with. So the load wasn't really on the CPU, it was all on the GPU. So was the Ryzen 5 a better choice than the i5 12600K? The only way I'll know that for sure is if I do a build with the 12600K with this exact same GPU. Now, if that's something you wanna see, Sound off down in the comments below and I'll make it happen. Also, if I were to recommend anything from today's build, I would say go with 32 gigs of RAM instead of 16 gigs of RAM. RAM prices have come down so much recently. In fact, I was just shopping today for it. 32 gigs of RAM at the same speed, 3200 megahertz for like $130, sometimes even less. So for that kind of cost, I would just jump up to the 32 gigs in a system like this. 
RAM is so cheap right now compared to what it's been, and systems seem to be using more and more of it than in the past. I'm sure it won't be long before 32 is the new norm. Also, if you want to check out more PC builds that I've done, I've got some more on the channel that you can check out right here. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video. We're never meant to last, but all the fun times we had, I'll never forget we will always share